on, which is one way that they could have tackled an inflation problem, instead feeling a bit more comfortable with tightening interest rates, Manisha. All right, Eunice, thanks for putting us in the picture. Manisha, we're going to go back to our top story now. Britain is reigning in a record budget deficit, but at a severe cost to the public sector and we're just hours away now from finding out how severe that actually will be. Some leaks so far. R.I. Shadurgahi sure has more now on the angry reaction amongst some taxpayers. To avert the most drastic reductions in government spending since World War II, the Robin Hood tax campaigners are targeting what they believe is the source of the UK's deficit problem. We're calling for a tax of £20 billion on the banks to help pay for the cuts. Because after all, it's because of the banks that the country is in this mess. George Osborne has said he will tax the banks, but only a very small amount, only about £2 billion. We think he can do ten times more. George Osborne, Britain's finance minister, has grim plans for cuts across the board to reach savings of $132 billion and to restore credibility to public finances. Restoring public confidence, though, may take longer. The thing that will most reduce the deficit is seeing a solid recovery in place and economic growth. That's what will generate tax revenues uh, to, to bring the deficit down. Not a program that's going to put perhaps a million more people out of work. It'll have a disastrous consequence that will actually make the deficit even worse. I think there's going to be a huge public reaction. Unions showed up at the Methodist Church Hall in London to protest, from dock workers to teachers and social workers. We were very worried about um, cuts in social care, care for the elderly, um, healthy eating initiatives for children. They're trying to protect the most vulnerable, but that's not going to happen. Inside, people cheered and waved flags in support of keynote speakers representing trade unions and the arts. We, we know this government isn't interested in making the bankers pay for their crisis. It's the ordinary workers who will bear the burden. Joseph Kloska starred in the British film Made in Dagenham about women who lobbied the UK government for equal pay in the 1960s. I hope that in a few years' time that I'll be working on a film that tells the story of how we, today, took on this government, took on their cuts, and we won! For every pound that the UK Film Council has invested, they get a return of five which I think is fairly extraordinary in the current economic climate. So in terms of the economy, it's a tiny, tiny fraction of public spending, but in return it generates over a billion pounds for the Treasury. Kloska was there not just to stress the arts as a valued contributor to the UK economy, but to the development of the country itself. They'll cut the elite off and remove anything for the grassroots, which is not a society I want to live in. We need to be able to allow people to find means of self-expression, means of empowerment, and that's how you, and you do that through funding and supporting and engaging in the arts. Braced for the budget cuts, most Britons are taking a stance, either picketing shoulder to shoulder or staging street dramas to portray the nation's plight. All eyes are on George Osborne. Aisha Dergahi, CNN, London. And we're joined now by Vanessa Rossi. She's a senior fellow from Chatham House, very well regarded research institution, been pouring over the details and the leaks we've had ahead of this. So, uh, what do you make of the vast cuts that George Osborne will be announcing today? Well, for one thing, we do have to remember all this money is not immediately up front. It's phased over five years. So some of these changes, like 500,000 job losses in the public sector, sound very dramatic. But if they're phased in over several years, then this could be absorbed by a growing economy. So it's not quite as dramatic as it seems. But the other thing we have to remember is that this makes it look as if the UK is in an unusual position, as if it is, has to make draconian changes because we're somewhere near the brink of bankruptcy. And actually, our debt levels are not as high as many of our European partners. Our debt levels so, are more than a trillion dollars. Yes, but some countries have bigger ones than that. I mean, if we're looking at the share of GDP, we're actually lower in terms of our debt levels than most of our European partners and so lower than the United States. So unacceptable, that's the general view. Perfectly true, and I think we have to remember that even if economists debate and argue about the immediate changes, how quickly it should happen, most people realise that you do have to make changes over the next three or four years. If you don't, you have no room for manoeuvre if we were to have 
some other event that comes along and causes problems in the economy. We need to have prudential slack to be able to react in case events turn out. So your out. view is that severe cuts, it will be painful, but it has to be done to give the government some slack if something shocking comes. We really have to keep those prudential margins. It sounds difficult.